In this brief tutorial, we'll address a specific way to transfer certain types of animations from 3ds Max to Blender 2.8, specifically any object in 3ds Max which has been procedurally animated with keyframes using modifiers. Let's begin with this simple scene animated in 3ds Max. Here we have a, an abstract spherical lattice object which appears to wobble around a bit in midair, then suddenly melts into a puddle on the ground plane. It's a short 250 frame scene with modifier parameters keyframed along the timeline to get the resulting effect. Let's briefly examine the modifier panel for this animation to see what operators are in use here. As expected, the top modifier in the stack is in fact a melt modifier with the amount parameter keyframed to drive that effect. Beneath the melt modifier, we have a simple noise modifier, which provides that wobble effect using a keyframed phase parameter. Next is a lattice modifier, which creates that joint and strut appearance in place of the vertices and edges, as it sits above a simple geosphere primitive object at the base of the stack. Obviously, there's no file format natively to 3ds Max which would support exporting the model to Blender with the animations in our modifier stack intact. And if we collapse the modifier stack, we'll lose our keyframe properties. So one easy way to transport this exact model and animation over to Blender is to bake the data into a point cache file that Blender can easily understand. Here in Blender 2.8, I've already configured the units to use millimeters because I know the animation in 3ds Max is also using the same units. When exporting a model in 3ds Max, which contains modifiers in the stack, it's typical practice to collapse the stack to an editable poly object first. In this case, I will simply add an edit poly modifier to the top of the stack temporarily. Now with our object selected, we can go to our export panel and choose export selected. In this case, I'll pick the OBJ file format and assign an arbitrary name for the file. In the OBJ export options, be sure you do not have any optimized settings enabled. Uh, because that could change the vertex order of the model and mess up the point cache translation later on. Once the static version of our model is exported, we can remove the edit poly modifier from the stack and import a point cache modifier to the top. In the point cache settings, click the new button. Navigate to the location of your OBJ and give the file a name. Change the save as type option to point cache 2 or .pc2. This step is critical because the mesh cache in Blender cannot read XML file extensions. Now all we have to do is press the record button. And very quickly a point cache file of our entire animation will be recorded and saved to the location that we chose. Switching over to Blender now, the first thing we need to do, obviously, is import our static OBJ model. Navigate to the location of your file, and in the Import OBJ Properties, I recommend enabling the Keep Vert Order option. Everything else could stay at the default. Upon import, you should see your model appear in the Blender workspace just as it appeared on frame 1 of the animation in 3ds Max. Of course, this is just our static model right now, so we need to add our point cache in order to bring over the animated properties. In the Modifiers tab, go to Add Modifier, Mesh Cache. Change the format to PC2 and click the folder icon next to File Path to locate your saved PC2 file. Now 
Now when you scrub the Blender timeline, you should see the animation of your model just as it was in 3ds Max. In my case, there's a slight difference in the location of the model itself. In Max, the model was melting exactly on the surface of the viewport grid. However, in Blender, the grid is at the center of the model, so the melting happens beneath the grid. This is a side effect of not applying transforms to the model over in 3ds Max, but could easily be corrected here in Blender just the same. I'll bring up the quad viewport so I can view the model from all angles. Transform adjustments can be made to the mesh cache object, just as if it were a native model in Blender. With the model selected, I'll grab the object and move it up on the z-axis with the hotkeys G and then Z until it's in the exact location I expected it to be. This transformation will not affect the result of the mesh cache animation unless I was recording keyframes in the timeline. Now let's add a subdivision surface modifier just to finish things off. Other Blender modifiers could be added beneath the mesh cache to further tweak the shape and of course you also have the freedom now to change materials and render the object using all the native Blender tools. Keep in mind that if for some reason your model or point cache file was imported in the wrong direction or location, there are settings that you could adjust in the mesh cache to correct the issue uh, directly in Blender, such as axis mapping. Please consider subscribing to the channel if content like this interests you, and don't forget to enable the bell icon so you can be notified when new videos or updates are added. Thank you, and see you in the next video.